traditionally and in ancient times, fermentation was considered to be like using a microorganism that uh, had a metabolism in the absence of oxygen. A big question in the plant-based industry is should they be trying to mimic conventional uh, animal-based analogs, whether it be dairy or meat, or should they just stand alone and just be tasty, nutritious products? If you're a PE investor or a big corporate, you're probably going to be more interested in um, the commercialized technologies um, from precision fermentation, biomass fermentation, or plant-based proteins, some gas fermentation proteins. Or if you're a venture capitalist or a startup in the space, you're probably working in cultivated meat and seafood, um, molecular farming, or plant cell culture. So on the enzyme side, you have an example of protease. And the process to be able to get this protease is fairly simple. You basically get the cells out, concentrate it, and formulate it. Typically, you don't get like something that is something that is pure. But besides water, you get about, you know, typically around 80% plus or minus like 10% of purity uh, out of this process. Uh, but really, when you look at those kagers, those compound annual growth rates, it runs the gamut, anywhere from 6 to 52%. On the technical front, you know, two major ones include just scaling up production to the massive volumes um, that currently um, support conventional meat and seafood, as well as reducing the cost of the growth medium. We're going to see a lot of products that have soy, pea, oats, lentils, wheats, tubers, and other types of seeds and nuts. Price sensitivity is, is a major challenge. So to what extent will consumers of tomorrow be able to absorb the high costs of some of these premium cell-based meat and seafood products. And actually run it for a longer time, which results in overall, uh, over time yield to be much better than before. What's important to note here is historically, uh, we are already using these technologies uh, for dozens of years to create many important biochemicals and biopharmaceuticals. But what we're trying to do now is actually scale these technologies in order to produce food ingredients and scale them safely and scale them cost-effectively. And this technique can be also uh, be used for medicine. Um, so basically, you have a process that is really similar, except that uh, the downstream processing or the purification process, because you're making a medicine, is a lot more um, complicated. And you can see like a little bit the steps of the process. Once you identify the molecule, you actually want to find ways to be able to make it more like a need as opposed to like a preference. And I've kind of listed some of the things that are out there. Uh, at this point, uh, that run the whole gamut of the prices that they can capture. We're essentially we're using genetically engineered plants like soy, tobacco, or potatoes to basically make them their own little bioreactors. Yes. So they would have to find yeasts that would be able to tolerate longer fermentation cycles and be able to express the kind of flavor profile 